Hi, third grade scientists. Welcome back to class in our new treehouse science lab in the country of Indonesia. As you know, in this unit, we're going to be working together to help protect the world's endangered orangutans. Ali, my friend, the orangutan, he's upstairs in the treehouse sleeping right now, but I couldn't quite sleep. I had too much on my mind. So I thought it might be a good time for us to talk about where we are in this incredible journey. Now up in the satellite in the night sky, they took a picture of our planet, planet Earth. And out of this entire vast world that we share and live in, the orangutans can only be found in two small islands, the island of Sumatra and the island of Borneo. And as you can see, there's Australia. So you know, it's quite far away from our state of Michigan. On another map that I found, it does show you just how far we are. So if we look at the United States over here in North America, and we cross the Atlantic Ocean and cross over the continent of Africa, and we cross over the Indian Ocean, and we go into Asia, we can see where the island of Borneo is. And there's Sumatra right there. It's pretty amazing just how small the landmass is that holds all of our orangutans on this planet. It's incredible. So again, looking at another map, we've got our continents. And again, I just liked this map because it showed us just how tiny, incredibly small the area is that holds the habitat for their orangutans that we love so much. On this slide, if we take a good look, we can see the islands of Sumatra and Borneo just a little bit more close up. And you can see by the green, there's not a lot of rainforest left in Sumatra nor over here in Borneo. So our wild orangutans, they occur in these scattered populations in just a fraction of the former range and habitat that they used to live in. Taking a closer look at our orangutans' habitats, take a look at these two photographs. Use your powers of observation. What do you notice about the habitat of an orangutan? But you're noticing a lot of amazing things. Well, some observations that I have made of Sumatra and Borneo are there's lots of green trees and plants all over wherever you look. It looks kind of steamy and it feels kind of steamy. That's why it feels good being out here in the deck of our laboratory up in the trees. In order for it to be steamy, we know it's got to have very hot temperatures. And we have hot temperatures and steamy air, we know that there's lots of rain. And of course, plants need lots of rain, so it's the perfect environment for the habitat of the orangutans. The islands of Sumatra and Borneo are located near the equator. And we know, because we learned in geography, that that is the hottest location around our planet. These islands, and they'd be right over there, are also some of the rainiest places in the world. The islands of Sumatra and Borneo have the perfect combination of heat and rain. There are very few places on Earth that have weather that's just right for orangutans. Some places are hotter, some places are rainier, but Borneo and Sumatra has just the perfect combination. Now here's a photograph of Borneo. Take a close look. Notice the years and the changes of Borneo. Do you see a difference? We go from solid green to more white is introduced here. And more white and less green, a lot less green. And by 2020, you can see that the green is only found now in the northeastern part of the country. Well, one of the problems that you may have guessed, just like when the settlers came to Michigan, is deforestation. A lot of the people that live in Sumatra and Borneo are making quite a bit of money through their farming. So they're taking care of their families by earning an income. 
well as we learned in our geography and history units about Michigan. Oftentimes it's easier to burn the land and burn the trees down than it is to chop them. So oftentimes farmers will have these wildfires that take down the rainforest. So once they take down the rainforest, then they have land available for them to farm. As you can see from this picture, what they want to farm are palm trees, actually oil palms is the specific name. Oil palms have an ingredient that we use in a lot of different products. But when they slash and burn the forests, that's called deforestation. So D means taking away, taking away of the forest. When we look at why they're farming all of those oil palms, here's just some, some of the collection of all the products that are made from palm oil. Take a look. Do you see anything that you notice that you might find under your cupboards, in your kitchen? Maybe in the bathroom, the shaving cream, shampoos, soaps, makeups, all kinds of things that you might find in your bathroom or in your cleaning closets. And then on the other side, we've got all kinds of cereals and desserts and ice creams and lunch foods. There's even some Cheerios and potato chips, Skittles. It's amazing what we use palm oil for. So as you can see, the farmers can earn quite a bit of money through the product of harvesting those palm trees. Another problem that we have with deforestation of the rainforest is for lumber. The people of Sumatra and Borneo can earn a living by harvesting the trees to build other structures like homes and businesses. Now, why would deforestation be a problem for our orangutans? Put on your thinking caps. What do you think? If you thought to yourself, well, our orangutans like Ali back here, they need tall trees. That's how they make their nest in their sleep. In those tall trees, there's a lot of fruit that they find to eat and insects to eat. If they have their forest destroyed, then they have no habitat. And if there's no habitat, there's no food. And if there's no food, there's no orangutans. Another problem that's really sad is what's called illegal poaching. Poaching is the capturing illegally of animals. And as you know, orangutans are so adorable and so cute. A lot of poachers will capture these poor baby orangutans, take them from their families, put them in cages, and sell them as pets. Sometimes they're sold to zoos, but a lot of the time they're individual owners. And those people that buy these baby orangutans, they spend a lot of money to have an animal like this. It's hard to imagine being taken from your family like these poor little guys are. So you might be thinking, that's horrible. What can we do? There's got to be something that we can do for to help. But what? We live all the way over here in Michigan, all the way across the world. Well, our wildlife protection organization that we talked about last week is looking for a special island that we can create where orangutans can be safe. What we want to make is a reserve. And a reserve is a protected place where orangutans can live free and in the wild. There are three islands that our organization is looking at right now. There's the island of Ark, Ark Island, Creek Island and Blue Island. Take a good look at those islands. Can you guess which island's weather would be best for orangutans? We're looking for hot temperatures and lots of rain.
Can you decide by looking? It's rather hard, isn't it? We obviously see that we're, they're surrounded by blue. There's a lot of water around these islands. You can also see on the islands that there's a lot of green, which is great. We're looking for a lot of green because we know the habitat for our orangutans, they need lots of trees. But other than that, it's really hard to tell. They look very similar. So what will we do? Well, our wildlife protection organization has asked us to figure that out. Which island would be the best and hottest and rainiest for our orangutans? We're really going to have to learn more about weather to answer that question. Stay tuned, boys and girls. Oh, it's time for me to go to sleep now. Hmm. Just like Ollie, our next lesson will be about how we will become a meteorologist so that we can find the perfect island for these red apes that we love so much. Good night, boys and girls. Have a good sleep. <laughs>